Hi, hello, welcome back to Bioenergetics. My name is Devaraj. Today we're going to look at a quite intense, uh, very intense, you might even say for many people, myself included, move called the, the toe squat. And uh, we're going to look a bit at how to do it, little variations you can do, and how you can integrate it into the uh, five position release that I showed, I think, in number 50 of this series. Okay, so let's get to it. Essentially, the toe squat is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a squat position. Let's come back just so you can see my, my toes. Where your heels come up and you go into a squat. I'm doing it front on, I'll do it from the side on, and maybe it's easier for you to see. So it's a squat on your toes with your heels up and your arms outstretched. And ideally, that as in the chair pose, what's very important is the position of your upper legs. But ideally, they should be parallel to the floor, horizontal, basically. Don't go right down onto your, you know, if it's agonizingly painful and you need to just rest a little bit, but you don't want to drop the whole pose, you can come down into a full squat where your ass is near your heels, or you can come up a little bit, but ideally the pose is like this. Another variation you can do is to put one or both fingertips on the ground, just to give a little bit of support to maintain it. And you would start a pose like this for something like 30 seconds, breathing full on through the mouth. And really feeling your body. And what you'll notice quite quickly probably is a lot of pain and, and uh, you know, it's really putting certain muscles under a lot of pressure around here, you're around your thighs and around the backs of your shins. It's putting a lot of pressure on the adductors, you know, and uh, understand that in bioenergetics, what we're basically doing is putting the muscles under controlled pressure because in that activated state, they can start to release some of the holding. That's the intention. So when that pressure comes, when that, when, when the feeling comes, you know, when the pain comes, when the discomfort comes, you have to try and really increase your breathing and breathe through it. And sometimes what you'll notice is it becomes very intense and then it disperses. It comes right up like a crescendo and your mind is like, I can't take another fucking second of this. And then you keep on breathing and it actually disperses or it delocalizes and then it comes again. <laughs> but basically in this way, you know, this is a very intense way to under, just a really direct way to understand bioenergetics. You're really putting these muscles under strain, under, under, under strain, and they can then release the holding, but it's very, very intense experientially. Okay, so that's the toe squat. Uh, and now I'm just gonna look how you can integrate that into this uh, five position release, which was in the uh, episode of this series, which preceded it. I think that was number 50, and this is 51. And basically you can integrate it in, in place of a chair pose. In this five position release, which I sometimes call five position anxiety release, you know, it's a sequence of five poses. You start with the bow and you start with each of them the same length of time. I recommend one minute each to start or even less if, if you're new and it's very intense. So you start with the bow position, arms up, arms back, pelvis forwards, gaze dead ahead, breathing into this and feeling your body. Remember, it's not so much the length of time that you do pose. Much more important is how much you're breathing and feeling your body. And then the second part of it, we go into the bioenergetic cobra, which is your upper body stretching towards the vertical, toes and palms only on the floor, heels pushing back, and your legs staying horizontal. Looking dead ahead, you can actually release to that, sticking your tongue out going, if you want to, that can help. The third pose in this sequence of five is to come into the dog, arms and legs straight, heels off the floor but pushing towards the floor, so you've got to leave some room to stretch there. Again, breathing and feeling the body, neck relaxed. And then instead of going into the chair pose, you come into the toe squat, basically like this. This and the cobra for most people are the most intense poses in this sequence of five. You 
Nice big breaths out through the mouth. And then at some point, in your ding, you come into a arch pose to complete. And then you go around three times. For most people, you could start that sequence on a 30, 40 second ding or a one minute ding and build up to like a two minute ding. So in a two minute ding, you do each pose for two minutes. That will take 10 minutes in total. And you go around three times, that will be 30 minutes. And that will be a good workout. That will be a good workout. Something else to add, you know, is that these poses are quite advanced. It's good to start with a bow and arch because these poses are potent. Sorry, these poses are not so much derived from that, but they're additions to it when you're used to the bow and arch. So if you're kind of one of these guys who wants to jump in right at the end and take a big shortcut, you might not want to do that. You know, practice with the bow and arch first, and then when you're confident with that, you can add these extra poses in uh, to increase the release. They activate often the same muscles as in the bow and arch, but from a different angle. From a different angle and that allows more release because when you're following one bioenergetic series over time your body and your mind get attuned to it and they don't get the level of release that they could initially often there's a lot of release going on for the first maybe week or month or something like that and they're still great maintenance poses but changing it around a little bit can help go a bit deeper and you get into the muscles in a slightly different way and you release a bit more so a lot of people have messaged me who are, who are really into the bow and arch and saying, wow, adding these extra two or three poses to that is really creating a lot of extra release. And that was my experience as well. But if you're just starting out, it's probably better to just start with a bow and arch to start with and not try to run before you can walk, so to speak. Of course, everybody's body, everyone's body is different. And more to the point, the way that we hold uh, muscles and emotionality in the body is different also. You know, levels of uh, learning and levels of uh, our, our, from our genes. Anyway, this has been, a, this has been um, an introduction to the toe squat. I hope you find it useful. Remember, it is an advanced posture. If it's really too intense for you, you know, don't beat yourself up. That's not achieving anything either. And it's also a little bit self-indulgent. So just go back to doing less time or less intense postures. Great. That's bioenergetics. Over and out. Speak to you again soon. Cheers. Yeah, you can do it.